Hi friends, so glad you're back to our See the Light, Yes You Can Draw club meetings. I'm Pat Nepley, I'm your master artist, and I'll be with you through all of these club meetings. And this is club meeting number 17. It's all about the grounds. I hope you brought a friend to join us today because we're going to have a great time. Now let's talk about what you're going to need for today's club meeting. Very simple supplies today. Just some paper. You can use white paper, but I always use toned paper so it shows up easier for you. A pencil, any drawing pencil, and a kneaded eraser. That's it. Okay, so the last time we were together, we actually got a chance to work with color pastels, and we did a drawing of a pear. And I hope since that time, you've had a chance to work on some more drawings of some simple objects wherever you are at school or at home. A piece of fruit, a book, a toy, and you've got a chance to work with those chalk pastels and blend those colors. It was a lot of fun, I bet. Now today we're going to be working on something that's very basic but very important so that you can become a better artist and make drawings that are more realistic. Now since we've been together we've talked about line, shape, space, value, and color. We're going to circle back and revisit the idea of space. And the very important part about space how you establish distance in space in a drawing. Okay, before we get started, we have to learn some even more basics about lines. And that's the difference between a vertical line and a horizontal line. Now you might have heard those words before, but let's just review to make sure we know. A vertical line is up and down. A horizontal line goes across from left to right. Now, why is that important for you to know? Well, the word horizontal comes from the word horizon. And the horizon is the line where sky and earth meet. For example, take a look at this painting by the famous artist Winslow Homer. This American artist loved to do seascapes, and this painting called the Gulf Stream has some fishermen out on a boat when the water's starting to get stormy and you can see very clearly where the sky meets the ocean. Have you ever been out on a boat and all around you is simply water everywhere you look? That line, not a drawn line, but a virtual line where the sky and the ocean meet is called the horizon. Now, what if you're not looking at an ocean? What if you're looking across, say, just out your window? Well, there's still a horizon line. It might be obscured by some trees or some buildings in the way, but the horizon line is there. And that's where we get the word horizontal. So let me just show you what I want you to do today. Grab a piece of paper and your pencil, and I want you to divide your piece of paper by putting two horizontal lines. So what you're going to do is divide your paper into thirds. So very lightly, just draw two horizontal lines like this. They don't have to be straight, but you see how the sections are kind of even. When you're planning a composition for your drawing, friends, I want you to always be thinking in terms of having these three areas. You don't have to draw the lines, but you have to be thinking that they're there. And these three areas of your drawing are called the grounds. I don't mean like the sidewalk ground. Let me explain. This area here, this is called the foreground. It's the very front of your drawing. So anything that is closest to you will be in this area, the bottom of your drawing. Now what do you think this middle section here is called? That's right, the middle ground. And that would be something that's behind what's in front, but not yet far away. This area here is called the background. You've probably heard that word before. Maybe you've seen a movie and a cartoon, and you see what's in the background. It's not the main action up front, but it's the sky or scenery, something in the background. That's important for you to know when you're planning your drawing. That will always be at the top of your paper. So you have three grounds, 
foreground, middle ground, and background. Now it's probably easier to explain if we look at some artwork. Here's a painting by an artist named Richard Dybenkorn. And it's of a street that's windy, but there's a hill in the background. So let's take a look at this. In the foreground, you see the road and how wide the road looks. But it gets thinner as it leads back in space. So the foreground, what's on the bottom, is what's closest to you. Now let's look at the middle ground. In the middle ground, we have some homes, some grass, a curb, a tree. But now let's look at the background. Of course, there's sky, but there's also a hill. The furthest away in that neighborhood, there's a hill. You might think this is the horizon line, where the sky meets the ground. But when there's a hill, my friends, where the hill comes up out of the ground, that's actually the horizon line. So it would be about here, going across here, because the hill rises up out of the base of the ground, and the hill curves back down. So the background contains a hill and the sky. So let's look at another piece of art. This is by an American artist named Edward Hicks. And this is called the Cornell Farm. Now, it's very easy to see what's in the foreground of this painting. It's cows, a lot of them, and horses. The artist wanted to show very deep space, a really large field. So he made large animals in the front and then showed you trees that eventually got smaller. See how the trees are taller and they get smaller as they go away from us? That's in the middle ground. And far in the background, we have sky and a much further away field. So let's do this exercise. I'm going to put a piece of tracing paper over Mr. Hicks' painting. So you can see, if I were to draw a line, this is my foreground. This section that showed the field with the trees and the farmhouse is my middle ground. And this section with the sky and the furthest fields is my background. Does that seem pretty simple? It is, but it doesn't just apply to when you're looking outdoors. It's really important to understand foreground, middle ground, and background when you're planning something in tighter space. So let's take a look at this. Here's a drawing I did of some dishes and some blocks. So even though it's not outdoors and I'm not looking far away at a horizon line, I still want to be thinking of my three grounds. In the foreground is a big cube with some smaller dishes. So then you can see behind that is a large bowl on its edge. That's the middle ground then the background would be an even larger cube and the wall. So even though it's a smaller space that I'm trying to show, I'm conscious of what's in front, that will be at the bottom of the painting, what's in the middle, that's above it, and what's in the background. Okay, so how are you going to work with foreground, middle ground, and background? Let's do a little exercise. So I want you to grab that piece of paper where you drew the three lines, I'm going to work a little bit larger, very lightly. I'm going to just draw lines to help me remember foreground, middle ground, and background. But the line that I really want to draw is my horizon line. Remember, that's where the earth meets the sky. So take your pencil and don't make it straight. Make about where your middle ground and your background meet, kind of a straightish kind of line going across. That's your horizon line. But I don't want this to be a boring sketch, so I'm going to make hills come up out of the horizon. So you do the same thing. So I'm going to have a hill here, and then perhaps another overlapping hill that changes shape going across, and a little lighter, a hill in the distance. Great! Now, our foreground is what is closest to us, so the objects there are going to appear larger. 
So let's put in a rock and maybe some summer grass near the rock. And it's going to be larger. So rocks are not uh, always super smooth. Sometimes they're jagged. I'm going to make a large rock here and using the side of my pencil create some areas to show that it's a rock. And I'm going to put in some grass. And it's going to look larger because it's in the foreground. Now, I'm going to put in a road. I want you to put in a road. This is just a winding footpath, so it's not going to be really straight lines. But we're going to start off in the foreground, and then we're going to move through the middle ground and curve till we get to the background where it's going to disappear and blend together. So a road is two sides, so you have to start with two lines that eventually get closer and closer together as we move from the foreground to the background. Okay, so let's do that. Here's my two lines. We're just going to wind, and I'm going to come through the middle ground, and then I'm going to head towards the background. And see, it's not super straight. So here's my road, not super straight. I'm also not pressing too hard. But you see how it's getting closer and closer together? And then eventually, as it heads to the background, that's how we show space, by moving from larger to smaller. OK, now we want to put something that's actually going to be in all three grounds. How does that happen? Anytime you have a really large object in the foreground, it will pass through all three grounds. A perfect example is a tree. So if you were to put a tree over here, you know that it's tall. And a tall tree When, because it's so large and so close to you, will actually look like it's going through the other grounds. This is where your eraser comes in. Now you know that it's actually not pressing back against those hills, but you're creating the appearance of depth by putting a large object based in our foreground that passes through the other grounds. And you can continue to add as much detail as you want on your tree. Maybe some bark. You can even put some grass along the side of the road. But anytime you're starting to get further and further away, the details have to be smaller because you're moving back in space. So here we have foreground closer objects, middle ground, slightly further away, and then in the background are things that are much further away, like our hills and our sky. You know, when I'm looking at this drawing, it reminds me of a really great passage in scripture about hills. It's in Psalms. Let me read it to you. It's in Psalm 121, verse 1 and 2. I lift up my eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. What a great promise that is, our friends, that everything that was made by God, including us, is cared for by God, and he wants to help us no matter what we're going through. I love that verse. I love looking out at the hills by my house and being reminded of our awesome Lord. I hope you can join me next time when we're going to be talking some more about particulars about space so that you can create more realistic drawings. But in the meantime, look outside your window. Make a drawing of what you see in the foreground that's close to you, the middle ground, and far away in the background. Spend some time practicing so that you can become a better artist, because I know that, yes, you can draw. See you next time.